Hi, my name is Dan Fishman. I am a Libertarian candidate for Congress in the 6th District of Massachusetts, and you guys are watching Two Hotheads, where activism happens. Back live, Two Hotheads, where activism happens. And we, we're running out of time, but we got uh, a full studio of people. Frank Fox just walked in the door. <laughs> I came in to see you. You have to talk into the microphone, Frank Fox. I came in to see you, Michael. It's good to be back here. Your friend keeps on dropping things, however. I know. I don't, that's got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we're also trying to talk. We're, we, we don't have much time left. We're going to get into uh, question three. Do you support medical marijuana, Frank Fox? I, as a fox, am not able to register to vote. However, I support the cause. <laughs> Are foxes able to partake in, in medical marijuana? Uh, no. It, uh, have you ever tried to get your cat high? All the time. Well, it all really the fucks them up, you must understand. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Well, now we, we, we have a special call on the phone, too. We, we've been uh, we're running out of time. We we had two weeks of news that we didn't even get to. I think people know what's going on online with no one question three. A quick rundown of what happened is uh, I put a video out criticizing their campaign video. I thought it was really silly. Um, they were saying that it, medical marijuana initiative was just a big scam to make legalized weed happen in Massachusetts. I laughed at them and said more people support legal weed than medical so you're you're kind of out of your mind we we talked about this for ad nauseum for a while they went after us we got in a lot of press about it uh, one of the people that they went after us about was the king of pot they went after myself and the king of pot they put out a press release attacking us king of pot hasn't talked about it yet and uh, we have him on the phone we want to hear what he thinks about this whole controversy and being put in the middle of it and how he felt about it reading it and uh, the video he put out called The Rise of the King of Pot about his mom and his family and uh, how he became the King of Pot. Hello, King of Pot. Hello, Brother Mike. Hello, Heather. Hello, everybody in the studio. How's everybody doing? Thank We're you. doing doing great. Doing great. How are you doing today? Uh, it's been a tough week, as you know, Mike, uh, but uh, doing good. And, uh, yeah, I've been pretty quiet. Had some personal things going on. But uh, uh, how I feel about it, uh, I feel it's kind of positive. You know, if they're ta if if all they have to do is just talk about you, uh, the leading activist in uh, Massachusetts, and uh, then going after me on the entertainment end, I mean, I think that's great. I really <laughs> do. <laughs> so it didn't it didn't really bother you. It didn't upset you. Honestly, no. It, it, it didn't upset me. I actually thought it was great. I, I, and that's, I don't know if right? I've told you offline, but really, I, I thought it was great. Yeah. Because, I mean, they have nothing else to stand on. Some of the facts that you brought up uh, earlier and what you've been saying uh, throughout, uh, it's clear. They don't know what they're talking about. It's still the same reefer madness that we've been having for so many years. Absolutely. And you're, you're so right on the mark. I More mean, the um, same. Yeah. And yet, and, and it's amazing that they've targeted you guys because it's only served to, you know, it, it, not that you guys need it at more credibility, but it just, it, it gives more credibility to our cause. That we're that, you know, that you guys are that important that they're going to call out individually and say, oh, it's this big secret that they're going to try and legalize ma marijuana. And the message we have is, you know, it's not a secret. <laughs> it's never been a secret. Yeah, it's never been a secret. We're out there. We're doing it, and we're getting ten times as many views as they do. Well, I see, I see, you know, your videos, and I watch your videos, and I see how many views they do get. People are paying attention to you, Mike, and they know people are paying attention, and that's what they're going to use because again like i said they have nothing else michael i mean the things that they are saying is absurd uh i saw the video when you uh, showed up at the wayland high school and you know i mean you handled yourself with really great class i mean they tried to interrupt you a couple of times you handled yourself well you got your point across and you know they know you know what you're talking about the thing is do they know what they're talking about and i say absolutely not 
And yeah, and, and it's funny to see that they've they've now they've switched their tactics. Before they were saying, "Oh, this is all just a ruse," and then you guys kind of was, you know, you deflated that balloon because you said, "Hey, it's not a ruse." Uh, sixty percent of Massachusetts voters are, are in support of this, and now their big argument is think of the children. Yeah, and and that's what <laughs> I I decided to go and take them to task today. Good. On, on the Somerville News uh, did an Good. article um, with with you, Mike. Um, where they interviewed you and, and and try to give the other side of the story after they published that like hit piece, you know, total yeah, totally one sided, distorted, totally distorted, um, just no fact checking whatsoever, just letting you know letting this one guy Corey Mashburn go on and on about. His, but you got to uh, give it to the Somerville News because they let right? me fact exactly. Check it, they said okay, we get a, yeah, we get a chance. We'll we'll offer the rebuttal. But talk about the children. So what what was your response yep. on the children, Heather? Well, uh, so basically, I mean. Uh, it frustrates me the most because I work with children, so I see the uh, effects firsthand of the drug war on children, and uh, they're all negative. I mean, the 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 arguments that they they make um, are totally inaccurate. I mean, they had I I basically I I, I wrote a response to this. Um, the a question three advocates response that's you, you can read the article um, but I, I went in and, and debunked their claims that you know marijuana use by children goes up when marijuana is made legal medically or decriminalized which is total bullshit there was a big article in Salon bullshit, that just man. came out um, which is an excerpt from um, Smoke Signals a social history of marijuana you guys should check that out we have it on our website um, that that is completely not true. Marijuana use is, is state level or even gone down. The only yeah. real reason why, um, in one play, I believe it was Colorado that they reported an increase is because one people, county. people aren't yeah one county. Yeah. people just kids in that area aren't. They think that it's you know, an explanation could be that they're not as afraid to talk about to admit it anymore. It's lessening the yeah. social stigma. It's not that their use is changing. It's just they're not afraid of saying yep. afraid of being arrested for saying it. Exactly. And then there's the whole other argument. Oh, legalizing medical marijuana will make it easier for kids to get pot, which is also total bullshit. It yeah. is absolutely. <laughs> yeah. the I and mean, when easiest. you're eliminating the black market that doesn't car <laughs> kids. When you're cutting, taking away right. any of their business, that's going to help you keep it away from the kids. The kids are the ones who sell it in the black market. They're able to get access to it in the black market easier than grown adults. And they're the re they're the ones whose lives get ruined by it, not because of the addictive nature yep. of the drug, but because they have records and because they're threatened. They're threatened with these these permanent records that'll prevent them yep. from getting federal, you know, fu you know, uh, student aid that'll and prevent them from later. getting a job, which it's already hard enough Homes. for young people to get jobs. Yep. Prevent them from getting a home, and that's the next point that they always keep touting that more children are getting addicted to marijuana and are getting admitted to rehab as a <laughs> result. And this is so so unfound. It's so it's so yeah. insidious because on the surface that's actually true. Uh, people no. are getting more kids are getting admitted, but, but it's why? not because they're addicted to marijuana. It's because they're being pressured into choosing rehab over jail. Yeah. Obviously, you're gonna go to rehab and have a clean record of instead course. of going to jail. So it's not a contest. And what do kids get mostly arrested for? It's marijuana. It's no other mm -hmm. drug. So that's gonna pad the numbers mm -hmm. of kids that are getting. And there's also admitted those parents out there too. We've center. all seen these parents out there. Yeah. They find out their kids gay. They send them to gay camp. <laughs> they find out the I kids. I want to go to gay camp. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's these other parents. You know, no, but you know what I'm talking about. Not yes, gay. Yeah. No, gay conversion. Straight yeah, camp is more so, like yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, like exactly. they yeah. try to turn them into straight people when they're gay kids. Uh, and you also know the parents. Everyone's probably had a friend like this, where the mother, or father finds out the kid smoked a joint, and they send him to rehab. Yep. They say this kid's got a yep. problem. He's smoking weed, and it's like now he's going to have a problem because he's going to be hanging out with other, you know, real what? drug addicts yeah. and learning about all sorts of other drugs he might not have known about before, and maybe making some friends. It's the same thing behind sending people to jail. They just and then come they out wonder, better criminals. Yeah, then they wonder <laughs> and, why a and that's the point, I Heather, really that you're making that isn't don't know made you are. enough. <laughs> uh, is that the consequences, the consequences of uh, a child being caught with marijuana right. and the consequences five or six years down the line. Exactly. It's not right. It yep. shouldn't be there and it should be eliminated, but they only talk about the children on the way you just said, uh, worrying about it leading to other drugs, easy, accessible. We need to start talking about what the damage is when they are caught and that is the perfect reason why we need to have these insane laws changed. And also we need to talk about that this plant is not a toxic 
plant. Yes. This is a plant that can be mixed with a lot of different drugs and nothing happens to you. Yes. It is safer than aspirin and, you know, Tylenol. it just needs to be, you know, thrown down these, these uh, zillions heads, whatever you call them. <laughs> yeah. no, I like that. That was like a combination of zealot and idiot. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know me. I'm, I'm like Archie Bunker. I, I murder the English vocabulary. Yeah, I mean, when I do my own show, people just listen to will listen to me screw up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it though. I like. That I never word. thought that's I'd heard the King of Heart and Archie Bunker though in the same <laughs> sentence. That's like. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. But I, I appreciate what you said there, and I mean, I basically said as much in my response to this article I, I basically said you know the reason why this is so infuriating is because marijuana prohibition is the worst policy for children not only for children you know teens who, who get you know uh, records first of all and those teens are disproportionately always low income kids or kids of color that are getting targeted all right, that have already all these other strikes against them younger people yeah, too. yeah exactly younger, younger people across yep. the board but it's also their parents, you know, getting put in jail for low-level drug possession, you know, or for using yeah. marijuana as medicine, even, yeah. you know. Getting now, and, and the people that are afraid to use it, um, and you know, now I, I, I know two people, uh, one that was my mom and now a friend who is no longer with us, and our government still insists uh, to put the insane policies even on their veterans, uh, that a veteran that would be under care uh, with the Veterans Administration would have to worry each and every time that he went, uh, because he had Agent Orange, which our government does not recognize, and you go there and you complain about your pain, and they go, you know, it's just in your mind, because they don't recognize it as Agent Orange, so they, they send you home with OxyContin, they send you home with Percocets, they send you home with these bevy of yep. drugs that you keep on taking for 30 to 35 years that just stop playing with your mind, and then you try to use something that really calms you down, but you've got to be in fear, you're going to lose all your medical benefits. So therefore, when is the point do you get that you say enough is enough, and you take a gun and you put it to your head? Well, that happened to one of my friends this week wow. and again I will say like I said in my video that Michael has been so kind to be distributing and which Zandrak uh, Productions put together Andrew Hutchison which I want to thank very much nice. it says in that video I make a strong statement the statement I made is that the government killed my mother well when I say the government killed my mother I mean the laws that the government makes so therefore they are responsible they also just killed my friend so now I've got two casualties from this uh, this insane uh, law laws that what they're using to keep away this medicine from our veterans, keeping this uh, medicine away from the older people. I'm sick and tired of it. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I've been quiet, yeah, because I've been going through a lot, but I have a lot to talk about. So uh, you're going to start hearing a lot more, and hopefully through the channels with Mike, uh, you'll hear you'll hear what I have to say in the, the future. Kingofpot.com. We're just about out of time. We still have Frank Fox here. We're going to try to book him in for another show here. <laughs> How we want to bring Fox. you. Yeah, we want to bring you back up here too, because we really want to spend more time and really get into this. Um, your video is so powerful, Michael. Your story is so powerful. The King of Pot, Michael. I call you the same, Michael Malta. Thank you for I being know, a good brother. friend, and uh, thank you for thank being you. a strong activist and speaking out. And thank doing you for it the keeping right way. doing what you're doing, Mike, because if it wasn't for you, the King of Pot wouldn't even know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I mean, I'm so busy with my personal stuff now. I look to you, and I urge everybody to listen to the show with uh, Heather and Mike and, and, and go to MikeCan.net and, and, and watch his videos. You may not agree all the time, but watch it. He's, he has messages to say. And there might be something you might learn. So thank you for always giving me an air here. Thank you, guys. Thank everybody in the studio, and I hope to see you soon, Mike, in person. Definitely. we got to make up for happy birthday, remember? Oh, yeah. We, <laughs> let's sing happy birthday right now to the camera. Oh, man. No, this is birthday. we we got to sing it anyway. Can we have Frank Frog sing it with us, yeah. too? Yeah, right. Frank Frog sing it. You like my voice too much. <laughs> I think it'll be perfect. Before we do that to end the show, we're gonna we're already late. We're behind. We're, we're, we're <laughs> yep. over time. Well, we, we have right. to say goodbye to everyone. We have to yes. say thank um, Nikki for Round coming in. Nikki Smokes. Okay. We have to wish, yeah, we got to wish uh, the best wishes to Tommy Dawson who just went through yes. serious surgery. Her husband. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna right sing. Now. We're gonna we're sing Happy Birthday. Yeah. Right? Happy Birthday. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Oh, you sing it. No rhythm. You start it. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. 
Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, dear K.O.P. K-O-P. Yeah. Happy birthday to <laughs> Yeah. All right, you guys are great. Thank you very much. God bless See you, you next bro. week. All Thank right. you, King of Pot. Oh, man. Two hotheads where activism happens. Another fun-filled week is done. But we'll be back next week. And I believe we have uh, Judge Jim Gray is going to be on the show next week.